بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد ايها الاحباب continue on in our study of شرح السنه امام بابهاري المؤلف قال واحذر الصغار المحدثات من الامور فان الصغار البدعة تعود حتى تصير كبارا وكذلك كل بدعة احتثت في هذه الأمة كان أولها صغيرا يشبه الحق فأغتر بذلك من دخل فيها من دخل فيها ثم لم يستطع المخرج منها فعظمت وصارت دينا يدان أو دي يدان بها فخالف صراط الصراط المستقيم فخرج من الإسلام very profound statement and that Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said قال he said beware of the small innovation because they grow until they become large this is the case with every innovation introduced in this ummah it began as something small, bearing resemblance to the truth, subhanAllah, haq, which is why those who entered it were misled and then were unable to leave it. So it grew and became the religion which they followed and thus deviated from the straight path and left Islam. Allahu Akbar. That is such a profound statement that Imam Baba Hadi said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, about the importance of adhering to the Sunnah and avoiding bid'ah, and that when bid'ah is introduced to the Ummah, even if it starts off small, when people think something is small, it grows. And over time it grows. Maybe in the life of that person, and maybe not. Maybe after their life, other people will have reached to shirk and have left the fold of Islam because of that original bid'ah that someone else started. وَعِيَادٌ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And in a narration, in regards to how uh, these things will, uh, a small bid'ah can grow uh, in the narration reported by Adarami in his Sunan, Amr ibn Salma, o Salama, o Salma said, we used to sit by the door of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala before the morning prayer so that when he came out we would walk with him to the mosque one day Abu Musa al-Ashari radiallahu ta'ala anhu came to us and said, Has Abu Abdurrahman come out yet? We replied, No. So he sat down with us until he came out. When he came out, we all stood along with him. So Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu said to him, said to him O Abu Abdurrahman, I have just seen something in the mosque which I deem to be an evil. But all praise is for Allah. I did not see anything except good. He inquired, Then what is it? Abu Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied, If you live, you will see it. I saw in the mosque people sitting in circles, awaiting the prayer. In each circle they had pebbles in their hand. And a man would say, Repeat Allahu Akbar a hundred times. So they would repeat it a hundred times. Then he would say, Say La ilaha illallah a hundred times. So they would say it a hundred times. Then he would say, Say Subhanallah a hundred times. So they would say it a hundred times. Ibn Mas'ud asked radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what, do you say, what did you say to them? Abu Musa said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, I did not say anything to them. Instead I waited to hear your, hear your view or what you declared. Ibn Mas'ud replied, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, would that you had ordered them to count up the evil deeds they acquired and assured them that their good deeds would not be lost. Then we went along with him until he came to one of these circles and stood and said, what is this which I, I see you are doing? They replied, O oh, Abu Abdurrahman, these are pebbles upon which we are counting takbir, with tahlil, and tasbih. 
He said, count up your evil deeds. I assure you that none of your good deeds will be lost. Woe to you, O Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How quickly you go to destruction. These are the companions of your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and who are widespread. There are his clothes which have not yet decayed and his bowl which is not unbroken by him in whose hand is my soul. Either you are upon a religion better guided than the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or that you are opening the door of misguidance. They said, O oh, Abu Adrahman, by Allah we only intended good. He said, How many there are who intend good, but do not achieve it. Indeed, Allah's Messenger وسلم, said to us, A people will recite the Quran, but it will not pass beyond their throats. By Allah, I do not know. Perhaps most of them are from you. Then he left them. Umar ibn Salma, the sub-narrator, said, We saw most of those people fighting against us on the day of Nahrawan, along with the Khawarij. And this was authenticated by Shaykh Salim al-Halali in his book Al-Bid'ah. Ayyu al-Ahbab, that narration is so powerful and doesn't require much explanation. However, I'll just make some quick points that look as something as simple as counting pebbles. And they were making dhikr. So there were aspects of what they were doing that were mashroor in their asl, in the origin. But then the way that they were doing it was not mashroor. And this is why a sahabi, the sahabi Jalil, uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, made inkar. He uh, called them to account for what they did. For something as simple as small as a pebble. What about the people now celebrating the birthday of the Prophet وسلم, Celebrating his ascendance to heaven. Celebrating the change of the, the Qibla. Celebrating all kind of innovative things in celebrations. Do, uh, cel uh, supplicating to the graves. Calling upon the dead. Circumambulating around the graves, going around the graves, dancing together, men and women, until they're in a drunken state and making dhikr in that state. What about all of these things? What about these people who make takfir of everyone who disagrees with them? Or they say all the governments are, 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 are disbelievers and we should rebel against them. All of these innovations, how are they on the scale to, compared to people who were doing something that was asli mashroor, that had aspects that were mashroor in it, making dhikr, but they did it in a way, it was the wudj in which they, they did it. The, the way in which they did it, the means that they did it, is where they were falling into doubtful issues. And the Sahaba were strong about making inkar of bid'ah. This is the madhab of the Salaf. On top of that, then the reality manifested itself. The sub-narrator said that he saw most of those people who were making that simple dhikr. Later, fighting against the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een along with the Khawarij, some of the biggest of Ahl bidah Wa'iyadu billah min dhalika. Those people who made takfir of the Sahaba. Who some of the Ummah, some of the Ulama, the Rasakhun of Al-Ilm, make takfir of the Khawarij. Meaning that their bid'ah left, made them leave the religion and they have their dalil. They have the dalil from the Sunnah. Some of the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu said they would go, they would go shoot through, the, they would come into Islam as the arrow shoots through its target. It, it shoots through its target. It goes through the target. It goes out the back of the target. So some of the ulama explain this is dalil that the Khawarij are not uh, Muslim. But then another group say no, they're innovators. And as Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhum, I believe it was Ali ibn Abi Talib or Ibn Abbas, who said when asked about the Khawarij, he said that there are people who 
uh, you know, they, they basically that they're not uh, uh, disbelievers. But yet, when he was asked, are they disbelievers? He said, no, there are people who uh, rebelled against us. So meaning that they were uh, rebels. They were sinful rebels going against the rightly guided khalifat. The point being that something small or what is perceived as small grows to that which is big and can take a, fold, a person out of the fold of Islam and is very, very dangerous. And we already talked in depth about those things, some of those things which take you out of the fold of Islam, that bid'ahs of two types, bid'ah mukaffara and bid'ah ghayra mukaffara, bid'ah mukaffara meaning bid'ah, innovation that is, reaches the level of shirk and kufr. And bid'ah ghayra mukaffara is bid'ah which is not like that. For example, let's give an example with the same uh, the same uh, example, the Prophet Wasallam's birthday. So those people who celebrate the Prophet Wasallam's birthday, who believe that they have the accurate birthday and they celebrate it, have fallen into a bid'ah. And maybe they do some practices, you know, do all kind of practices. Maybe it involves mixing and and could even be alcohol, could be all kind of things. And maybe it's not. Maybe they don't do that. Maybe they just uh, they just innovate by uh, believe, by doing this practice, celebrating this practice, and, and doing certain actions. This is bid'ah, and and one of the major sins. But if they do this practice, the celebration of the Prophet Sallallahu birthday, and they begin to go to the extent of doing acts of shirk, supplicating to the Prophet Sallallahu during this time, saying, oh, this is the Prophet Sallallahu birthday, and I'm going to pray for him to give me a child for my wife, my barren wife, or I'm praying for him to increase my risk, or whatever. All of those things which involve shirk. Shirk in rububiyyah and shirk in uluhiyyah. If they have fallen into that, then that shows, then that same action has now become or led to bid'a mukaffara, which takes you out of the fold of Islam. So that shows us how the same surah, how it can, the same, uh, the same action or the same deed or misdeed can take you out of uh, out of the fold of Islam. It is incredibly dangerous, and some of the other things we benefit is it shows us the importance of adhering to this uh, to the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah adhere to what the salaf were upon and that the first the asal of the jama'ah as we mentioned prior to this is who? it's the sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anam ajma'een and that we should follow their example as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, it's upon you, my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, Men kan ala wa ma kan ali He was talking about the Firqat al Najiyah, those people who are the safe suck, sect. He said, uh, Those people who are upon, those who are upon I, what I'm upon and what my Sahaba are upon. So that shows us. We have to be upon the sunnah of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anam ajma'in that the, the asl of Ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. They form the jama'ah. They form the foundation. They form the minhaj. They form the uh, sabila mu'mineen. They adhere to the sabila mu'mineen. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and here's some athar of the salaf that uh, verify this for us. Uh, translated by our brother Abu, uh, our brother Abbas Abu Yahya hafadhullah ta'ala jazala khairan. He said, he translated one of the statements, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, What is known by necessity for the one who reflects upon the book and the sunnah and what the, and what Ahlul Sunnah, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah agree upon from all different sects is that the best of the generations from this ummah in its actions, statements, beliefs, and in all good virtues are the first generation, then those who came after them, then those who came after them. And this is, of course, according to the hadith. And is established from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The hadith we just mentioned. Uh, from many other, many other narrations. And that the first three generations are better than those who came after them in every single virtue, in knowledge, action, iman, 
intellect, dean, clarity, worship, and they are the foremost in clarifying every problem. And this is not rejected except by the one who is obstinate to that which is known from the deen of Islam by necessity. Ma'lum min deen bi durura. And Allah has misguided him away from knowledge. So the only person who can dispute or who would dare dispute the fact that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een are the asal of the jama'ah and the, <coughs> the methab of the salaf <coughs> is the, the, the best uh, medha, medha and the most that they the most knowledgeable and the most uh, knowledgeable and fiqh and deen and manners and actions and all of those things the only person who would deny this is someone who is being denied by their Lord from knowledge they're being prohibited from knowledge because they're stuck in a state of extreme jahil and ignorance And from amongst the other statements of the Salaf of this Ummah, Muhammad ibn uh, Hussein said, It reached me that some of the companions of Abu Ali al Jozanji asked him, What is the path of Allah? So some of his companions asked him, What is the path of Allah? He said, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, the most correct way. Most prosperous, most prosperous, and most distant from doubt is following the book and the sunnah in statements, actions, in belief, and intention. Because Allah Ta'ala said, وَإِن تُطِيعُهُ تَهْتَدُوا uh, If you obey him, you shall be uh, on right guidance. He was asked, what is the path to follow the sunnah? What is the path to following the sunnah? How do we follow the sunnah? Because people have this question now. This question was asked to our salaf. Rahimahumullah jami'an. He answered, keeping away from bid'ah and following that which the first three generations were gathered upon from the scholars of Islam and its people. Also keeping away from the gatherings of the people of philosophy and rhetoric and their people, meaning Ahl Kalam, as we explained before, adhering to the path of following and the example. And that is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered, was ordered with, uh, ordered with the saying of Allah, when it tabaa millata Ibrahim Hanifa, wa ma kana min al-mushrikeen. Then we have inspired you, follow the religion of Ibrahim Hanifa, you know, Islamic Tawheed. And he was not one of the mushrikun. Al Uzai said, Knowledge is that what came from the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and that which did not come from them is not knowledge. Imam Abu Mudaffir as Samani Rahimahullah Ta'ala said in his book, Al Intisar li Ahl al Hadith, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, when he was asked about the firqa to Najia, the safe sect, what I am upon and my companions, meaning whoever is upon what the Messenger وسلم, was upon and his companions. Therefore, it is necessary to know what the Messenger وسلم, and his companions were upon. And there is no way of knowing it except by transmission of narrations. So it is obligatory to return to that. Look at how the Salaf, look at how they were how they were strict about the narrations and the narrators, and that they realized that that was a Sabil al-Mu'mineen. That's how the religion was preserved. al Hussein ibn Muhammad al-Taybi, rahimahullah ta'ala said, Indeed, if you say, what is your proof that you are upon the correct path? Since every single sect claims that they are upon upon it rather than others. Look at this. Isn't this what people say today and a lot of people are confused. How do I know which is, these people call themselves Salafi. These people call themselves Khalafi. These people call themselves Takfiri. These people call themselves Khawarij. These people call themselves this. These people are Ashari. How do I know which one is correct? And this question was asked to our Salaf. What did he say? He said, I say 
This claim and affirmation of being on the correct path cannot be done by using deficient suspicion and allegations. Rather, it occurs by transmitting from brilliant scholars of these skills and the scholars of the people of Hadith, Ahl Hadith, who gathered the authentic Hadith concerning the matters of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his circumstances, his actions, and in all his dealings. Likewise, the circumstances of the companions radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'een from the Muhajirun and Ansar and those who followed them in goodness. From those collections of hadith were the collections of Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, uh, Muslim ibn Hajjaj, Hajjaj, rahimahumullah, and others from the well-known trustworthy ones about whom the East and the West are agreed upon the authenticity of what they brought in their books from the matters of the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions Radiallahu Ta'ala Majma'een. Then there are those who took it to extract its meanings and solve its issues, like Imam Abu Suleiman al Khatabi and the Imam Reviver of the Sunnah, Abu Muhammad al baghwi and the Imam Muhyiddin uh, uh, Muhyiddin uh, uh, An-Nawawi, Rahimahumullah, may Allah reward them on behalf of the Muslims with goodness and thankful that they made their, and we are thankful that they made their efforts for the deen. Then after the transmission of the narration, one looks to see who adheres to their guidance and follows their footsteps and is rightly guided upon their path in the principles and branches of the deen. And Allah knows best with what is correct. Look at the, the madhab of the Salaf, Ayyul Ahbab. Returning back to the books of the Salaf, returning back to the creed of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as espoused by the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and the uh, Salaf of this Ummah, this is the path of the believers. Imam Ab uh, Abd Rahman ibn Saadi rahimahullah ta'ala said, "Indeed, it is necessary upon the slave of Allah to adhere to and follow to what." and follow what the Messenger وسلم, came with. It is not allowed to oppose the Messenger Indeed, the text of the Messenger وسلم, is like the text of Allah. There is no concession for anyone, nor any excuse to leave it. And it is not allowed to give precedence to anyone's statement above his statement. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaytan. And may Allah bless us to be on the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa Sallallahu Wasallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad. Wa Ala Alihi Wasallam.